Welcome back to Big Nick's Meats and Treats. Today we're going to do smoked spatchcock turkey over a bed of herbs. I really wanted to get this done in time for Thanksgiving, but I just had too many other things going on, so I couldn't get it done. But we're going to get this out there for you today so you can plan on it for Christmas. Uh, today I'm going to do a 17 pound turkey. I really like the 12 to 15 pound range for this, especially on the smoker. Uh, this one's 17 pounds, I think it'll be fine. Probably gonna take us three hours to cook it or so. So let me get it out of the package and we'll get right back to you. All right, we got the turkey out of the package. Now, people ask me all the time, what's spatchcock, why do you do it, and what's the purpose of it? Well, if you look at a turkey the way it sits whole, it has this big hollow area on the inside of it. And because of that, when you put it in the smoker or in the oven, it doesn't cook evenly. So the dark meat and the white meat don't cook evenly. So the spatchcocking process is for the purpose of making everything cook evenly. So what I'm gonna to do to spatchcock it is I'm gonna flip the turkey over to where the back side is up. I'm gonna take my kitchen shears, you need a good pair of kitchen shears, and I'm gonna go right up the backbone on both sides of the turkey. And it's gonna get pretty hard when you get up by the ribs. And it's gonna sound kind of medieval. We're basically just gonna cut this entire backbone out. You get up here by the ribs, it gets a little, little tough. And same thing on the other side. Go up the other side of the backbone. A good pair of kitchen shears is real vital for spatchcocking. I cook all my chickens this way too. Sounds kind of gross, but you gotta get that bone out of there. Just keep going up the backbone. Much harder on a turkey than it is on a chicken. So you get, might have to use two hands to get through some of those ribs. Get up there. So I'm basically taking the whole backbone out, okay? Now the next thing you need to do is flip the turkey back over. So it's breast side up. And then you're gonna take both hands, right where the wishbone is, where the breast comes together, take both hands, put your weight on there, and push down, and you're gonna hear it sound real medieval. You're basically trying to break that breastbone, get that flattened out. And now when it's all spatchcocked, you'll be able to take the thighs and flip them over. And then the turkey lays flat like that. So now the dark meat and the white meat can cook at the same rate because everything's nice and flat. Next thing I'm gonna do is dry this off real quick. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick because when you're messing with poultry, you need, before you touch it and after you touch it, you wanna wash your hands. So I'm gonna wash up real quick and then we'll get ready to season it. One thing that you're gonna find is a real big hit if you can get it done right is crispy skin on a turkey. Crispy skin on a chicken is delicious. Crispy skin on a turkey is a whole nother level, but it's, you gotta do things in a certain order or it won't happen and then people end up pulling the skin off and don't eat it. So the first thing, and it's super important when you're doing a turkey, is you need to dab it dry with a paper towel and get the skin as dry as possible. You wanna get all that moisture off the skin in the crevices. Just get it as dry as you possibly can with paper towels. Because any moisture here is gonna reduce how crispy you can get the skin. So just make sure that you get it as dry as you can get it. And then the next thing, and we've talked about this previously in other videos, Pam cooking spray. It's not just for pans, right? You can put it on food and it is magical when it comes to chicken skin and turkey skin, All right? So I'm gonna spray this on here. So what this does is it, crisps up that skin and seals in the juices in the bird. And it just puts a real nice brown color on that skin. 
don't be afraid to use it. You know, you don't want it running off there like a like you got too much on or you put the paint on too heavy. But you definitely want a nice liberal coat on there. Make sure you get both sides of the wings, inside and outside. Get the thighs, get down in the crevices. Get the drumsticks all around. The other thing that this does for you is it gives uh, something for the seasonings to stick to. So I'm gonna wash my hands again before we do the seasoning and we'll get right back to you. So general seasoning uh, is just salt and pepper. I'm gonna do something a little, little bit different today. I'm gonna start off with a nice coat of coarse ground black pepper. I just get this at Costco. I go through this stuff like crazy with all the barbecue and I do. Put a nice liberal coat on that. Same as the pan, get inside, outside. You don't want it to look black, but you definitely want seasoning. Now you're talking 17, 18 pound bird. It needs a lot of seasoning. I've mentioned this in other videos, but you know one of the things that people do wrong when they're cooking meats, especially big meat, is they under season. All right, so I have black pepper on there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am using a mixture of rosemary, thyme, sage, marjoram, and kosher salt. This is a mixture that a friend of my son's made for me. And I'm gonna just put that all over the bird. Inside and out. And this just gives those, those seasonal flavors that you expect with turkey. All over there. We, we did it on the Thanksgiving turkey and it was just delicious. So put, put that all in. You can make this yourself. It's just you can put the herbs in the food processor or grind them up with a stone and mortar and then mix them with uh, kosher salt. You'll probably have to use it right away though because the herbs have moisture and it'll make the salt clumpy. So just uh, if you're going to do it, use it right away. Get, make sure you get some on the inside of the wings too because if you have guests like Mrs. M who loves the wings you got to get those seasoned she's all about the wings <laughs> so we got to get those all nice and seasoned and you might have to rub it on there a little bit with your hands that's not a big deal it's looking pretty good All right, I got that all seasoned up. I'm gonna wash up one more time and then we're gonna set this thing on a bed of herbs and get the smoker going. Well, so we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, we got the turkey all seasoned up, the smoker's going. I set it initially for about 215 degrees. I'm gonna get a nice uh, layer of smoke on the turkey before we brown up the skin. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but I'm gonna set up this dish for putting the turkey in the smoker. So I'm gonna take a glass baking dish or a, you can get a, a low profile aluminum dish, that works fine. And I'm gonna pour in, basically wanna cover the bottom with chicken stock. Maybe a little bit more, you know, quarter inch deep, something like that. And then I'm gonna take a couple of cookie cooling racks and I'm gonna interlace them and put them on top of this. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my herbs, basic, your basic poultry mix. I'm gonna take rosemary. This is fresh rosemary off uh, uh, my son's friend's garden. And thyme, put some thyme in there. Lay that on there. And some sage. Bay leaf, I'm gonna put that on there. All the things that you, you associate with turkey flavors. Spread that out, sage out a little bit so it gets all around. So what's gonna happen is when I put this turkey in the smoker, the chicken stock is gonna start to steam. It's gonna steam the herbs and the flavor of the herbs is gonna get into the turkey. And at the same time, I'm catching the drippings of the turkey. So we'll have just this sensational flavored gravy later. Really, really good. I'm gonna finish this up, wait for the smoker to get up to temp, and then we'll get it fired up and ready to go on the smoker. We'll see you in about five minutes. All right, I think we're just about ready to go. I took the turkey, put it on top of the racks with all the herbs, made sure the thighs are laying flat, got the smoker fired up to 215. And I'm gonna smoke it over hickory for about 45 minutes at 215, 
and then after 45 minutes I'm going to crank it up to 325 for the remainder. And what I'm shooting for is a 165 internal temperature in the breast meat and about 170 in the dark meat. And that's probably going to take about three hours, maybe a little over three hours on this size turkey, counting the smoke time and the time at 325. So let me get it on the smoker and we'll see you in a few hours. Well, we just pulled the turkey off. It's been three and a half hours or so. It looks amazing, and man, does it smell good. I want you to take a look at the skin here, and you can hear this, just how crispy that is. It's like a potato chip. So I'm gonna have to let this sit here probably for 20 minutes to a half hour before I can cut it because it's so hot. So we'll see you in a half hour, and we'll dig into this. So I cut a leg and a thigh off and one of the breasts. I'm going to cut into this, take a taste, and you can just see how juicy that is. Look at that. Crazy. This thing's been sitting here for half hour. Mmm. That's so good. Oh. That skin is like a potato chip. That's so good. Let's take a look at the breast because that's usually where the meat gets dried out. Let's cut into that. Let's look how, oh man, that's so nice. Look at the juice coming out of that. That is so good. Look at that. It's amazing. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Ridiculous. Tonight, open-faced hot turkey sandwiches with gravy. Uh, next week, we're going to do cinnamon rolls with my sister. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Until then, watch me work, baby.